Over the course of Smash 4's lifespan so far, there have been a plethora of adjustments made to the game to adjust the overall balance between characters at various levels of play. Some characters have received their share of nerfs and changes to tone down tools deemed too powerful or centralising, but for the most part the cast has gotten better compared to the 3DS days, leading to a greater number of competitively viable characters. However, what this video hopes to discuss isn't explicitly the overall character balance, but rather dissect these changes and what they do overall with regards to the competitive design of the game. As somebody who had been involved with the development of Project M for over 4 years and has been a tournament player for a similar amount of time, I like to think I've picked up a little thing or two with regards to game design, or at the very least the design of competitive Smash. While defining good competitive design is difficult, it's important to understand what overall elements of character design and interaction correlate to bring about an experience that offers competitive depth and variety. In this sense, character and game balance serve not only as independent elements from design, but rather as components that complement the idea as a whole. Consequently, the severe focus on balance within the overall cast is, in my opinion, a slightly misguided one, because whilst it's important to adjust characters in such a way such that they all at least have a chance to compete at high and top level, the way in which the designers and balance team go about this in Smash 4 is not always a way that's particularly conducive to creating a well-rounded experience. In the most recent update for Smash 4, version 1.1.3, Bowser received a notable change to his up throw which lessened its damage but increased its speed, reduced its end lag and decreased its overall knockback to make it work as a combo throw. True comboing into follow ups at low percents and setting up for 50 50s and even death setups at higher percents. Due to the strength of his aerials and general moveset, he's able to get massive amounts of damage out of his grabs, possibly more than any other character in the game. This, coupled with his fantastic jab, one of the safest in the game, and his amazing grab range mean that not only can this character kill you in a small handful of grabs, but he also has solid ways to pressure you to secure his grabs. The issue with this, however, is that despite it making Bowser a very solid character now in terms of how he can perform, his design has become incredibly linear and shallow because it just revolves around using a tiny handful of incredibly powerful options excessively to dish out absurd amounts of damage. This leads to him being undynamic to fight against and arguably as, leading to what can be argued as overall a poorly designed character that has simply received a band-aid fix to mask his real issues. In order to understand how to better improve a character whilst retaining a design that allows for competitive dynamic gameplay, the first step is to understand a character's flaws, and not only what they do in terms of holding a character back, but also the severity comparative to the rest of the roster. In the case of Bowser, it's clear he's designed to be a heavy bruiser type character. A character that has a plethora of hard hitting attacks that are relatively high commitment, but are generally capable of overwhelming the foe if properly placed. Coupled with his fast run speed, once he gains an advantage, he's able to keep applying pressure to his foe through the sheer strength of his hitboxes. However, he's held back by mediocre frame data, a poor out of shield game barring his up B, massive size which, despite assisting his range, makes him absolute combo food, a complete lack of solid landing options due to his mediocre air physics coupled with having the highest overall landing lag in the game, and an overall fairly shallow and limited neutral. While his run speed is fast, Almost everything else about this character is very slow. His walk speed is slow, his rolls, spot dodge and air dodge are slow, he takes longer than any other character to get off the ground while jumping, and as mentioned before, his frame data is mediocre on both the ground and in the air. Consequently, what well, the developers should have prioritised adjusting, in my opinion, are targeting some of the more fundamental elements of Bowser's game. Reduction on landing lag of aerials, slightly improved startup on a few key elements of his moveset, Improved utility on certain moves and a reduced jump squat would improve this character to allow him to play the game better at a fundamental level, without deviating too far from his initial design ideas. Being a bulky heavy bruiser, Bowser can afford to take a lot of hits, however that doesn't necessarily mean he wants to. His size will always naturally be a factor in how much he gets hit, so having that alongside a big number of other elements means that this character would often just get abused upon being hit with no sort of pressure relief. This isn't necessarily an issue, because aforementioned he can afford to take the hits, however his fundamental neutral options aren't really good enough to allow him to prevent foes from hitting him or pressuring him in the first place. This actually leads me onto the point of character polarisation as well as normalisation. There's a saying that creating an imbalance within gameplay actually creates a more balanced gameplay. With regards to fighting games, one wants to avoid creating too normalised a roster because it leads to gameplay swiftly becoming stale. 
you don't get as much diversity in character interactions, and there are fewer general character archetypes in the game, leading to a lack of variety to keep players engaged, sometimes going as far as compromising the overall depth of the game for the sake of balance overall. On the flip side, creating characters that are too polarised often leads to character interactions being one dimensional and shallow. Gameplay becomes binary and unengaging, in a different way and if a character is actually good they can become frustrating both from an opposing player and spectator standpoint. The most prominent examples of this in Smash 4 by far are Little Mac and Jigglypuff. Little Mac is a character with incredibly overwhelming ground and neutral options but his disadvantage state is so severe that once you as the opposing player are able to get a hit or grab on him he gets abused harder than anyone else in the game. A lot of characters end up just being completely suppressed by Mac's superior frame data and absurd power at high level to the point where a lot of them lose a number of their usual neutral options because Mac is able to just brute force through them. On the flip side, due to Mac's awful aerials and terrible air mobility, once you get a hit on him it becomes incredibly easy to mix him up while you're at the advantage, and even easier when you force him off stage. Both of these lead to an overall shallow dynamic in general between Mac and his opposition. Jigglypuff is a primarily air-based character with fast air movement, low weight and gravity, good pressure relief options but mediocre ground tools, mediocre range and incredibly sluggish ground movement. Since the character in every Smash game has been one of the harder ones to continually apply direct pressure to, often the optimal way to beat her is by playing incredibly defensive and then landing the big hits when you can abuse the fact that she's so light. Even in Melee this was the case. Watch any of Armada's recent sets vs Hungrybox and you'll find that Armada is actually the one doing the camping, abusing the fact that Jigglypuff lacks any solid tools to combat it, but at the same time being forced to respect the fact that an overcommitment can lead to a stock vanishing at 20 or 30% due to a rest. Although, on the flip side, this also highlights a design flaw in Fox's design, being able to abuse Jigglypuff's lack of solid anti-camping tools to apply a constant stream of low commitment pressure. While it's true both of these characters add very different dynamics to the game, the extreme natures of their design lead to inorganic and shallow interactions that somewhat defy the general fundamentals of the game, or rather push them to extremes. I don't want to sound like I'm targeting any player specifically for playing these characters, heck, I play a lot of Little Mac myself, but I thought it was worth highlighting these points. In fact, it's for this reason why despite both characters being regarded as fairly mediocre, or often in the case of Jigglypuff, generally awful, haven't received any buffs over the course of Smash 4's post-release development. I believe the designers and balance team realise just how polarised these two are and are very tentative to change them, not because they believe they are fine, but because improving them could potentially have a detrimental effect on the overall character balance and design as a whole. Honestly, the buff culture of Smash 4 as a whole is a rather strange one if simply because of the overall lack of consistency in its changes. While it's great that Sakurai and his team have a general idea of which characters are in need of improvement and toning down, it often seems like the team doesn't quite understand what or why specifically characters are in need of adjustment. Either that or they are a little too insistent on making certain characters adhered to an often flawed design idea. Ganondorf and Shulk are quite prevalent examples of this, as despite having received buffs almost every patch, their relative positions in terms of overall viability have remained approximately the same because their core issues are incredibly severe, yet have never really been addressed. Ganondorf, for example, constantly receives increased damage output for no real reason, and weird revamps to hitboxes that don't serve too much actual purpose, yet has received almost nothing in terms of actual frame data or mobility improvements. While it's okay for him to be a slow powerhouse character, as it stands he is too slow, and consequently struggles in a plethora of situations. Increasing his damage output doesn't help alleviate this at all, especially when his average damage output across all his normals is already the highest in the game. Shulk's buffs have helped him notably more, but the key issue of his attack startup being too long is something that has never been addressed barring on backslash. It again leaves the character incredibly vulnerable in a lot of fundamental areas, despite his range, various Monado art applications and techs, and gradual improvements to his power. There are two characters, however, whom I feel have been notably buffed in Smash 4 in a way that complements what I've been trying to get across so far, and those are Ike and most recently Mewtwo. Ike has been in a good place for a few months now, having received various adjustments to his frame data, landing lag values, hitbox sizes, as well as key damage and knockback adjustments to moves like his dash attack. 
Ike has become a much more prevalent tournament threat, yet also stands as a character with a good gameplay dynamic. He has core elements of his moveset and neutral, but the majority of his normals have some kind of solid utility. Despite having solid gram combos, they're not the absolute focus of his gameplay, and despite being strong and having great range, he has enough speed and mobility such that he is able to properly compete, but not stray too far from his intended design archetype. He retains key weaknesses such as mediocre recovery, and generally poor anti-pressure and out of shield options, but his strengths are more than enough to compensate for this versus the majority of the cast, while also retaining an interesting gameplay dynamic. I'd highly recommend watching any of Ryo's sets to truly understand what I mean. Mewtwo's improvements are quite intriguing, and at first one may not actually realise just how potent they are. Having decided to make Mewtwo into more of a glass cannon type character this time round, his weaknesses prior to this patch were incredibly prevalent, to the extent where people wrote him off due to the severity of them combined with his rather unorthodox nature of his kit. Balancing and designing an effective glass cannon is typically quite risky, however the changes employed to Mewtwo this patch have turned him into an incredibly solid character, with a plethora of strong spacing, combo, pressure and movement options, as well as an incredibly potent projectile in the form of Shadow Ball. Increased ground movement speed allows him to evade, approach and microspace more effectively. The large decreases in his landing lag allow for safer aerial approaches and zoning, with forward air in particular being incredibly potent and expand his combo possibilities. Refinements to his hitboxes prevent moves from blind spotting as much as they did before and just serve as good quality of life changes, and the new damage and knockback values on up air allow it to serve as a highly potent juggling tool that is capable of killing at higher percents. The improvements he has received allow him to also effectively mix up his neutral game much better, allowing him to effectively combat a good number of different character archetypes effectively. He's not without his issues of course, his underwhelming boxing options combined with his size, low weight and lack of fast pressure relief options means he still struggles against rushdown, but his strengths now definitely overshadow his weaknesses. The improvement and adjustment of these sorts of fundamental areas to characters not only helps alleviate extraneous weaknesses a character may have, but also organically expands their repertoire of useful moves. Characters gain new ways to apply and evade pressure as well as potentially a plethora of new combo possibilities. This, in turn, leads to a more interactive, interesting and involvement character dynamics and consequently better character design and a better competitive experience. It's hard to judge Smash 4's competitive future as a whole, even after a year of development. There are so many factors and so many characters. The scene is growing ever rapidly and there is certainly an abundance of up and coming players, exploring characters in new ways. If we were to assume that the patch in February to come alongside Corrin and Bayonetta was the last patch, then the game, while having its share of problems, would be in an interesting place, balanced and design-wise. I do want to spend a little time to focus on one last character however, the current dominant threat of Smash 4, Sheik. While Sheik is arguably the least dominating and potent of all the top characters in previous games, largely due to how she interacts with the current set of top tiers, her toolkit also allows her to harass various lower tier characters to the point where a Sheik played on point would render a good portion of the cast unusable at top level. The main culprit in question here in my opinion are her needles. Despite their low damage, their high knockback growth, fast travel speed, incredibly low startup and transcendent properties grant this character fast, safe near full stage length stage control that's ambiguous and restricting. Characters who are typically forced to play a defensive or projectile heavy game often can't against Sheik because she's able to outcamp them despite primarily being a rushdown character. Alongside having fantastic mobility, frame data and close to mid range pressure options, having an absurdly good projectile ends up being excessive in the grand scheme of things and also ends up being toxic. I personally feel an adjustment to needles to make them function closer to brawl needles alone would make this character a lot more manageable for a large number of characters. Thank you for watching this video. While I openly admit that I may not be the most knowledgeable person on the subject, I at least like to think I know enough to help inform people and spark discussion. The focus the community in general has had on character balance over design is something that has bothered me for quite a while, so I really wanted to make this video as thorough as possible. This is Silent Doom, peace out.